So this lesson was talking about real-world applications of quadratics, and I actually had um, a group of students that I took to the Grand Canyon a few years ago, and we actually made use of this when we got there, um, trying to figure out how deep the Grand Canyon was. And it was actually a lot easier than a number of my students expected it to be. So what I'm going to do is sort of walk you through what we did so you can see how uh, knowing this information is actually kind of fun. We'd been walking along this uh, hiking trail, and we got to the edge of the Grand Canyon, and we looked down, and obviously, you know, the Grand Canyon being the Grand Canyon, it was pretty far down. <laughs> and a couple of the students wanted to know just how far that actually was. See my cool, mad drawing skills here? So what we did was we decided we knew that there was a specific acceleration due to gravity. And um, we just were going to estimate, so we weren't, gonna, weren't worried about getting dead even. We just wanted to get a pretty good idea of how far down it was. So we used the average... Uh, acceleration due to gravity, which is 10 meters per second per second, um, which is usually uh, written as 10 meters per second squared like this. And so that tells us that every second something falls, it's going 10 meters per second faster than it was before. So if we, we knew if we were to drop something off the edge of the, of the Grand Canyon here and it started to fall, we should be able to time how long it took to hit down here and get an estimate of how far down the Grand Canyon was without having to have the world's longest measuring tape. So what we did was we, we dropped a, a little tiny pebble off the edge down here, and it fell down, fell down, and fell down, and we calculated about eight seconds before it hit the bottom. Now that eight seconds then told us the time that this thing had had, had been given to accelerate, and we knew that it was accelerating at 10 meters per second squared. So we, were, we decided to put that information into the formula. Um, the height of something as it's falling is one half of the acceleration due to gravity, which is that we estimated 10 meters per second squared, times the time squared. So we just had to take the time that this thing had fallen, the eight seconds, and use our uh, value for the acceleration due to gravity to figure out how far down that thing was. So we plugged in the 8 seconds for t, and we came up with h equals 1 half of 10, so 5 meters per second squared times t squared, so we had 8 times 8 is 64 seconds squared. So then our seconds squared here canceled, because we had seconds on the bottom and seconds on the top. So our height then was 5 times 64 meters, and 5 times 64, 320, 320 meters, which is, for those of you who are uh, U.S. system people, we have that's times 3, so that's 960 feet. It's about 960 feet, or almost 1,000 feet down. And we did all that just standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon because we could just estimate 5 times the time squared, and do that in our head. We just did 5 times 64 and came up with 320. So it's kind of fun to be able to get a pretty good idea of how far down this thing was just by dropping something over the edge and timing it. 